Hey everybody, it's Brian and welcome to the 16th Flutter tutorial. We're still on the Dart learning curve here. We've covered quite a bit, but what we need to do now is if you scroll all the way down here, you can see there's libraries and visibility. And I wanted to talk about this a little bit here. Um, in Dart, everything is a library, including the programs that we've made up to this point. There's a distinction in how those libraries are actually set up and how they're used though. Um, another distinction is whether they're internal to Dart they start with the import Dart semicolon or whether they are packages that are not included in Dart itself. Um, there is a lot out there. And to be brutally honest, there's some of these features you may never actually use. Um, you can import a package as a variable. You can actually show only specific parts of a package and hide specific parts of a package. You can even do lazy loading of a library, meaning you can have this massive library and only load the pieces you need as you need them. It's actually a really cool feature. Um, they don't really cover it a lot in the tour of Dart. You have to actually click on libraries over here and you can see there's a tour of the Dart libraries, commonly used libraries, and then a whole tutorial on how to create your own library packages. We're going to cover a little bit of this, but I wanted you to be aware of this for future tutorials here, that when you click on that, let me back up in case that wasn't apparent what I did, you click on tour of Dart libraries and you can see they have got just a ton of information of all of the built-in functionality with Dart and their slogan is batteries included, which I think they kind of took that and plagiarized that from Python. I'm not sure which one came first. I'm pretty sure it was Python. But uh, anyways, it, it is actually batteries included. There's a lot of bang for your buck in here. Um, one of my favorites is they have you know browser-based apps. They have IO, they have conversion, and they have mirroring, which is reflection. Um, so it's really nice to have this right into the library itself so you don't have to go and get something external. However, back here, you should be aware that you can actually make your own and you can publish it out on this thing called uh, pub.dartlang.org. Now, if you're wondering what it's pub, pub is a tool for managing Dart packages. And if you go out to pub.dartlang.org, you can see there is a lot out here. So let's say we want to, and I'm just going to pick something at random uh, image. You can see there's image pictures, flutter image, zoomable image, uh, image carousels, image transformers. Okay, let's try something a little more specific like resize. All right, so here's a good one. Uh, provides a server and web apps with the ability to load, manipulate, save images in various image file formats. And you can see it works in Flutter, it works on server, and it works on web. So we could actually just click on this. And it gives you a brief rundown, and not all of these are created equally, mind you. But uh, some of them have a lot of documentation, some of them don't. Um, you can see the author. Uh, this was not an official Dart package. And you can see that it has no reliance on Dart IO, so it can be used on both server and web applications. You can read write all of these formats, read only those, and it has all of these functions built in. And it has a change log and how to install and how to use, which we'll cover in a future tutorial. But for this tutorial specifically, I wanted you to know that that functionality exists. Um, just know that there is a massive amount and it's growing daily of libraries out there for you to use and just about any functionality you can think of is already out there and it's i mean as you're listening to me speak it is continuing to grow and grow and grow um, i've heard a lot of programmers say oh dart is dead don't work with dart i've actually seen it grow right before my own eyes and it's kind of crazy so let's dive into this one we're going to make our console app We'll call this lib intro. Why? I don't know, just because I couldn't come up with a better name. All right, so now that we have got this, a little bit of explaining what's going on here. You can see how we have this folder lib and we have this folder pub. When we use something out on the public, i.e. in pub dart, it actually goes in here. And you'll see that in future tutorials. What we're going to be working with is right here and in the built-in libraries. So let's actually expand this. And this is just boilerplate. This is, comes with every single application that we've made to date. And you can see how it says import package semicolon and then it has the path libintro slash libintro.dart as, because we're importing this as a variable, 
and then we can down here libintro.calc and we can import this as pretty much anything we want I mean we could say cat and then it will calculate using the function out here and we've talked about this before how we can add things in it's a pretty strong feature to be able to do that um, you can structure this pretty much any way you want um, there are some caveats one thing you'll have to have, and we'll cover this when we actually build our own library, is you'll have to have this pubspec YAML, um, which just has some details into it. All right, so what I wanted to cover is the differences here. So let's actually work with a built-in uh, Dart package here. So let's say local Notice how I'm starting with Dart semicolon, and you can see all of these that it come built in. That's pretty crazy, right? We've worked with a sync before. Uh, so let's, what we're going to work with is called convert. Convert really has some pretty nice features to it, but what we're going to work with a little bit is called JSON. If you don't know what that is, it's a way of stringifying, I guess is a good way of putting it an object so that you can work with it. Um, some people like XML, some people like JSON. It basically takes an object and makes it into a giant string or variable that you can pump off to the network, read it into another program and convert it back into an object. So we're gonna make a map and we're gonna say string int And then we're going to say map dot put if absent. And what we're going to do here is we're just going to say put my age in here. And now I feel old. I feel ancient. I play Call of Duty and these kids like mop the map with my face. And we'll just throw my daughter in there. So what we're going to do now is we're going to actually um, convert that object into a string. So we're going to say string. Encode. And we're going to encode the map itself. And we're just going to print this out. And you can see there is the JSON right there. That's the string representation of that object. So now we want to convert this, well, from a string back into an object. So we're going to say map string int. And let's call this people so we know that we have a different object altogether. And we're going to take that string and decode that into an object. And we're just going to say people for each. And then we have our key value pair. Maybe that was kind of bad. We have our key value pair. And we're just going to print that out. So really all we're doing is we're taking our map, our object, using JSON to encode it into a string, and then using JSON to take that string and uh, decode it back into an object. And you can see here's our JSON, and here's our actual decoded object being printed out in the for each. So this seems like a very simple example, but it really shows you just how powerful uh, Dart is. Uh, not so much that it can do JSON encoding and decoding. Other languages can do that, obviously. But the fact that you can very easily add this functionality right into your application without jumping through a lot of hoops like you have to with other languages. Um, sometimes you'll have to import this, do some local build, do some extra steps, do some configuration, da-da-da. Most of the time, it's very simple, very easy. Um, 
and I think in future tutorials, probably actually maybe the next tutorial, we're going to actually show how to just grab something random off of pubdartlang.org and show you how to leverage somebody else's code. Uh, I may have to actually, well, I mean, I mean, it's not that I may, I'm going to definitely have to test a few of these that make sure they actually work as intended. Um, but I mean, as you can see, just about anything you can really think of, like, let's just say, let's say you want to do a server. Let's look out here. Okay, so there's all different types of TCP servers. A web server, here's a multi-server, web server middleware, ICU server. Um, let's just pick something completely random here. Let's say IRC. There's an IRC library out here, uh, IRC client. I mean, as you can see, there's just a lot out here. And it's, I hate to sound like a broken record, but it's continually growing. So it's very important that you learn how to work with this because a lot of the times, you'll find functionality that you need already exists. And rather than reinventing the wheel, you're going to have to import the code and actually work with it. Well, that's all for this tutorial. I hope you found this educational and entertaining. Uh, once again, visit my website, voidrealms.com. Uh, click on tutorials and then GitHub for the source code for this and all other tutorials. And this is 100% funded by your donations. So if you found this remotely helpful and you're not a, and you're not a starving college student, go ahead and donate a few dollars, if you will. Um, Every dollar that you send funds this website, and at the end of the year, if it's uh, I have what's called an overage, meaning I have more money than what I need to fund the website, it goes into a charity. And last but not least, be sure to go to the contact page and visit the Void Realms Facebook group. There's 1,700 other programmers out there that can help you.